Okay, welcome guys to the next uh, physics tutorial and lesson, I, su I should say actually. And today, um, in this lesson, we are going to be talking about more on the kinematics equations. And last lesson, we talked about what the we derived all five of these equations. And let me um, recap what happened. So today, um, we're gonna work on working with the kinematic kinematics equations okay so let's just um, recap what happened last episode um, so our first one if you recall it was the the basic one where we had the average constant velocity times time number two we had the final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Number three, we had the we were using the, the same one as number one, but just the average. So it's v two, v one plus v two over two, which is the average velocity times time. Number four, my favorite one, it was the one where we had initial velocity times time plus half times the selection times time square and lastly we have the this one v2 squared minus v1 squared over 2a okay in this episode I'm going to um, talk about how to work with with these equations and how and when to use each one of them okay so to use these equations we basically when we're given a question and we're trying to find out how, how, which equation to use, we want to use the one where um, that doesn't include the variable that isn't included in the question. So, for example, so let's say um, let's put a chart down here: variable not included. Okay. So basically, when when we want to use each of these equations is when a question has a variable that's not in the in this. So let's say for this one, the question doesn't have acceleration in any part of it. So use this equation, or yeah, we so use this equation. So actually, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, this one we use it when there is a constant velocity. So this this is like the uh, special case. Now let's move on to the ones where we had constant uh, acceleration. So we use this one when there is no displacement in the question so when you're given a question where there is no displacement that ha that is talked about we use number two and we use number three when what is in there when v2 is in so sorry not v2 when acceleration is in there because no one in this equation does is acceleration involved so if you're given a question that doesn't have acceleration we use number three number four this in this equation we use it when v2 is in part of it because see only v1 is part of it only time acceleration and displacement so we use v so, so we use it the number four when we don't have a v2 and lastly we use number five when there is no time involved so when we're given acceleration velocity the two velocities and in the displacement we use number five okay so Keep in mind all of these um the different when and, and when and how to use these equations and let's move on to a few exercises. Okay, moving down. So we're given this quick question. Um, let me just move it up a bit. Can I move it up? No, I can't. Okay. So when, which equation shall we use? First off, I always like to uh um this is a really good um starter tip. Like when you're just beginning and just getting used to uh, kinematics, you should always write down what variables are given. So what variables are given in this question? Well, first off, we have the initial velocity. So let's write that down. Initial velocity equals two meters per second. And notice that um, we don't really need a direction in here because we are just assuming that this is all in one direction. Like plus is here, minus is here. So we're not going to, going to talk much about direction for now. So let's just assume that it's all linear, right? Okay, so we have velocity, which is a positive two meters per second. 
what else do we have? We have time. So we can put down time. Time equals five seconds. What else? And the ending velocity, he chose for five seconds, and after the five seconds, he has a velocity of 10 meters per second. So ending velocity equals 10 meters per second. And, and what are we asking? We're asking, we're being asked, how far did he travel? So we're trying to find displacement. So which equation, let's look back. Which equation has d displacement, the two velocities and time, and no acceleration? So which one has no acceleration? Well, number three, ding, 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 ding. We have a winner. We have this, this equation has displacement, the two velocities and time, and no acceleration, which is what exactly what we need. So let's start off by stating this equation. We can state it as this. Just rewrite it down, just to give us a quick recall of what it is. Okay, and let's check if it's correct. This is correct. Okay, so that, uh, now all we're going to do is plug it in and solve for displacement. So what do we have? V1 is 2 plus V2 is 10. So now we're just basically subbing it all in, right? Over 2 times time, and time is 5 seconds. So time is in by 5 seconds. And we have a displacement of what? 2 plus 10 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30 meters. And remember to write down the meters. So we know that the total distance he traveled, total displacement I should add, total displacement he traveled was 30 meters. Okay. And we don't need a direction because we're assuming that positive is just the one way. But we're, in this question, we're assuming that we're all working just one direction. So we don't really need a direction for now. For now, don't worry about that, guys. Okay, question number two. Again, we want to uh, write out what variables we have. So in this question, it's saying Bob starts off with an initial velocity of 10 meters per second and accelerates uniformly for two seconds at a rate of three meters per second squared. And we're, again, we're assuming it's, in, it's all in a straight line. So we don't really need direction for now. And we're being asked how far did he travel? So right off the bat, again, we know that we're either being asked for displacement because we're being asked how far did he travel. So we're being asked what was his displacement. Now what variables are we given? We're given this, an initial velocity of 10 meters per second. What else are we given? We know that acceleration, acceleration is constant, so we can use the kinematics equations. And we know that the time, the time is 2 seconds. So change in t equals 2 seconds. What else are we given? We're given that he is, he is accelerating uniformly at a rate of 3 meters per second squared. So we're given acceleration, 3 meters per second squared. So using all this, what which equation should we use? We have d, v1, time, acceleration, but no v2. So which question, which equation, sorry, has no v2? The fourth one, my favorite. So let's use that right now. And let's rewrite the fourth equation, which is v1, change in t, plus half a, change in t squared. And you know, after doing so many questions, you I mean, the equations, the, the equations just become second nature to you. I mean, just memorize it. So let's plug in the variables now. V1 is 10 times time plus half. Acceleration is 3 times time, which is 2 squared. And remember this squared, it's really important. If you, don't, if you miss out that squared, your equation's wrong. Like what I did in the previous episode. <laughs> I, I, I forgot to write, write a squared down at the when I was recapping. So I had it edit it in with my, with my um, video editor. <laughs> Hope you guys didn't uh, notice that. I'm sure it's pretty obvious anyway. So we can solve for these for the displacement. How far do you travel? 20 because 2 times 10 is 20 plus half times 3 times 2 squared is 4 and then we expand this out become 20 plus um, 4 divided by 2 is 2 so it's 20 plus 6 26 meters was his displacement. And there we go. So question two solved. And lastly, our last question. And I know that we haven't covered all the questions, but this, is, this lesson just just give you guys a feel of how to use them and when to use them. So I'm sure there are tons of questions online. So 
Yep. So let's start this equation. Let's read it through one time. A rock is dropped off. Um, oh, that's wrong. It should be A. <laughs> a rock is dropped off a 45 meter cliff and has an impact velocity of 30 meters per second. What was its acceleration? Okay. So what are we what are we trying to find? We're trying to find acceleration. So what is its acceleration? And we know that it was dropped off a 45 meter cliff. So let's give the direction down as positive because it's remember what I said last time that up is normally positive and only in some cases do we use down as positive. And this is one of the special cases when it is easier to work in to work with down as being positive because we're the, the rock is going down, so it's easier. I mean, it just makes sense to make down as positive. Because if you put up as positive, the, the whole equation will be negative. So, just for ease and convenience. So, let's go back to the question. Acceleration. We're trying to find acceleration. What else are we given? We're given that the distance the rock has traveled when it's dropping is 45 meters. Because it's dropped off a 45 meter cliff. So, we have a cliff here, and he's being dropped down by a distance of 45 45, oh man, that's 45 meters. Okay, and note here that this question is, um, I'm glad that, that, that I use this question because when it says dropped, and when you whenever you see a question that says dropped, it automatically means that the initial velocity is zero because you're just dropping it. So your it, this the initial velocity when you first drop the rock, when you drop down, he he didn't push um the person who who dropped it down didn't push the rock down, he just let it go. So v one is zero. So let's write that down. V one initial velocity is zero meters per second, and impact velocity impact means what speed did it touch the ground with? Not after it touched the ground, but before, right before it touched the ground. So v two is thirty meters per second. So given all these and note that we. Time isn't included anywhere in here. So which equation doesn't have time? Well, the fifth equation doesn't have time because it says right here in our chart, variable not included time, which is number five. So let's write that down. Change in D equals V2 squared minus V1 squared all over to A. And I'm not sure why I put the brackets here. Okay. I want to do what I put over there. No, I, that's right. Never mind. Okay, so now all we're gonna do once again is plug it in. So we have thirty for for the impact velocity. Square it. Remember the square minus v one square is just zero. So we just say we just cancel this off and say that it's zero because <laughs> sorry zero squared is just zero. So it's thirty squared minus zero over two. A and what's A? Oh, we're trying to find A. Sorry, so it's two A, and displacement is forty-five. We rearrange this whole equation, and let me actually just do this step again because it's kind of messy, and I don't really like this mess. It's not um, visually pleasing. So, I'm just erase. Yeah, I'm just. I hate my stuff being so messy, and I don't know that's kind of hypocritical because my handwriting is atrocious, but. <laughs> Okay, so before we want to do anything, let's actually rearrange the equation first because it's just good habit to rearrange the equation before plugging in because we might not know what we actually get. So let's remember we should find a. So we want to isolate a. So let's bring a up. So we have a equals and let's bring d down. So we have v two squared and since the v one squared is already cancelled off, it's zero. So it's v two squared over two times displacement, and if you're not sure how I got that, let's do it again step by step. So um, we know that um, v1 is cancelled out because it's 0 squared, it's just 0. So v, v1 squared is just out of the equation totally, it's totally out because we know it's 0. So we have now we have, I'm doing a different color so that, that you know that it's not really part of the of my work. So we have change in d equals v2 squared now because the v1 squared is gone. That's a square, it's 2 over to a and then we brought a up so we have a change in d equals v2 squared over 2 and we brought the d down we brought the d down so we have a equals v2 squared over 2 change in d and that was what we have here that's how I got this equation 
So let's plug it in now. Let's plug it in. V2 squared is 30. 30 squared over 2 times the distance that I traveled, which is 45. I know that these all, all these values are all positive because we say that down is positive. So its displacement is positive because it was traveling down. So its acceleration is what? I expand this out, we got 900 over 2 times 45. And 2 times 45 is 90, so 900 divided by 90 is 10 meters per second squared. And positive means down, so we know that it's going down. Which makes sense, because as it went down, it was being pulled by gravity, and gravity accelerates the object's speed. So yeah, that's basically all it is, and how we use this basically all the steps needed to use this equation. So yeah, hope you guys like this um, lesson of how we use the five kinematics equations to solve physics problems. So hope you guys learned from this lesson and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.